Okay, so the next thing we do is get these engines done and we're gonna use um, Alclad. Now you could just use your normal um, uh, XF32, which is Tamiya's titanium, is a nice color for this or something like that. But we're gonna do it a little bit different. Gloss black going on first because we want this to be quite shiny. More for the Thunderbirds one because they actually do polish the uh, turkey feathers at the back here to a fantastic finish. Not so much on the uh, the normal one we're going to do, but certainly for the, the Showbird, we're going to make it a little bit more shiny. But we can do it all in one and it gives me a chance to go through using them a bit. Okay, straightforward, we're going to be using, um, as I say, their gloss black, uh, which is the Alkali gloss black. You could use actually any gloss black. Um, to be totally honest, if I just get a new pipette for sucking a little bit of thinner. So usual thing, just as if you used to be doing it with um, acrylics, we put a little tiny bit of um, uh, the actual thinners in first. And then we're going to come back with a nice dollop just in like that of the gloss black. I'm going to try and keep this somewhat tidy without it dribbling everywhere. Usual thing, make sure you're in a nice, well-ventilated area. You don't want to be sniffing this down. Um, obviously, I can't put this in the spray booth because you can't actually hear me when it's on. So we just have to hold our breath a bit for a few minutes and do it quickly. Okay, checking the flow. Black coming through nice. Okay, turning the air pressure down, not totally down. We're gonna take it down to about 15 PSI, 15, 20 PSI. Obviously, if you're gonna go really over 20 PSI, you know, you're not gonna get a gloss finish. It's gonna actually put it down and dry in one, and you're only gonna end up with satin or even flat finish. So what we're gonna do very lightly, just to start with, because obviously this hasn't got a primer, we're just gonna very, very gently just put a coat on, cut into air, drying off, just so we can get some black on there, just for the minute. And then we'll just do the other one. It's quite handy when you've got a few on the go like this because you can work on the other bits whilst you're waiting. You're not gonna have to wait long. As long as you keep the coats nice and thin, it shouldn't be too much of a, a problem at all. Okay, so we're gonna come in with some um, chrome now. So, good old shake with the bottle. A Little bit in the old color cup. Air pressure down quite low. I'm gonna have it left on. Right, two reasons for doing this. On the back end of the collar of the back one, on the CJ version, the Block 50, the most outer ring is a very, very shiny silver. The rest of it is quite dark. So we're just gonna dust on some chrome. And then what we can do, we can mask over it in a moment. pressure down a little bit more and there we go that gives us our nice chrome effect just like that so we we'll just leave that to one side and what we we'll do as well is the turkey feathers at the same time so just misting this on There we go, that gives us our very nice shiny chrome finish. We're more than happy with that, so we just let that dry. We'll just have a look, that's all looking all okay on that one. So we just do this other one now. There we go, that's that one done. Very straightforward, very simple. And then we'll just put that to one side. 
Right, we just tip the chrome back in. I just blow it out. And put the lid on top of that. Now for the other one we're going to use a nice aluminium. You can find it. So we've got here is a nice aluminium into the colour cup. Just like that. Okay. Just check our flow. We're all happy with that. And we're going to come back and we're going to do this other one. Same thing. Nice. Just dusting it on. There we go, all on, just like that. And just dry that off the touch. And you should be able to see the difference between the, the chrome and the aluminium. As you can see there, we've got this bottom one, very, very shiny chrome, and obviously a nice aluminium, sort of flattish color as they have on the top. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna come in with is a little bit of what we call hot blue. Um, the official name is uh, Hot Metal Blue, that's right. And this will hopefully give us just a tiny bit of blue staining. We don't need much, we don't want much. We literally just need to give us that hot look that the engines get at the rear. So all we're gonna do is very, very lightly just put in a misting, a tiniest of tiny amount right over the top. And it hopefully just will have a hint of blue which will make it give it that hot look thinning up the exhaust as well and I'm just hoping it will just give us that slight hint of how you can see it there of hot blue just on the edge so let's pop that down for a minute and we we'll do the same inside giving it that hot blue and then what we're going to do is just literally just add a tiniest streak to each of the these blades coming off the back of the other one off of the block 50 to give it that blue effect to make it look like hot metal so we've done the blue like that and then what we're going to do we'll just give this a quick blow through to get rid of the blue color and then we're going to come back with the tiniest amount of hot red just like that okay let's pop the lid on the hot blue and we can come back with a little drop of hot red we need a tiniest amount okay we'll just same thing the red is a lot stronger so you only need literally just a dab just to try and give a hot metal type of look so it comes up with sort of a purpley color so that's done there, and we just put a tiny bit running around the back of that one as well. And then hopefully when it all comes together, it will actually all look very nice and hot colour, as if it sort of got burnt. Okay, so I masked up that end ring we were talking about, that chrome ring, and all I've done is spray some flat black right the way around the outside now. So what we're going to do, if I can find the end, We'll unmask. You see, it's still looking for the end. So if 
we just pop a knife just underneath and then we peel very carefully there we go we can see that's nice silver ring um, off the back and that's what we're after so if we very carefully just bring over the engine nozzles which we're going to have to do a little bit of thing for the uh, feathering and then if we can just find the top little dent uh, on here, there it is, there's the top, so when it goes on hopefully we'll see the difference between the two and there you go, you can see that ring effect on there, so you've got the chrome ring running around and by the time we dull down the actual exhaust area itself that chrome ring should be quite noticeable and quite nice, so we've done it like that so all we're going to have to do now is come back and then mask up the actual tail area and then this back bit can then be painted the um, the actual gunship grey which the rest of the aircraft is and obviously the bottom will be the, the lighter grey as well but it will marry up but that's taken care of that and obviously we've got quite a nice looking uh, inside there as well so there's two ways of doing this you can buy little decals which come with certainly afterburner decals through an F-16 um, stencil data set and you can actually just decal and place these all on or the other way you can do it just take some Tamiya tape and it's a long and very laborious job to be honest but it is really the the only way you can sort of do it and you place your Tamiya tape on just like that for one come in with your second bit and it goes up just like that and you need a third bit which sort of squares that off because you're following there's a little line just in there just like that and your fourth one is the down one and then what you can do to save yourself a little bit of time it doesn't always work this but uh, it sometimes does if you get some more Tamiya tape and you can make up a little template of it now it probably won't be enough to go all the way around and keep going round and round and round and doing all of these but it'll certainly be enough to keep you going for the minute so if you come back and you put a little bit just in the inside let's have that bit out just like that a little bit on the inside of the back one again what this is doing is just holding all the tape together into one place like that and then what you can do is you get yourself a, a little bit extra just pop it on your trousers just to take some tackiness off of it okay you can go like that and then come back with your flat black okay and then literally you just blow in just like that, cut to air to dry it off almost immediately, just like that, and then with any luck, peel that off gently, okay, we should, and there we go, if we bring you nice and tight, you can see that's the first um, of those black areas you get, and then literally come along, you want to place again, and this is the trouble where you'll have is actually getting these to line up, just like that okay touch tape over the top drying off okay top one off and it is say a very slow job but you can go around and you can put all of those ones in there just like that and work all the way around to put them in and then these end ones we can just touch in with a little bit of flat black or the other way is to use the pro modelers wash so i'll carry on putting these in and there we go, by using the, those masks we've got just there, literally we've gone around and we've put those little black areas all in. Now we've obviously just got to put the, the tiny bits in on the end as well. So they're not exactly just quite as dark um, a black as obviously those appear. So a way of getting around that and to give it that nice sort of um, effect is I've got here some of the dark Pro Modelers wash. Now all we're going to do with quite a small brush is having a hunt for one just going to pop some dark in those end areas just like that so it's going to get some on a brush and as I say if you see me do the typhoon build 
you know you can obviously put in black if you wanted to or any color you like I quite like using the dark because it's not as quite as in your face and it gives it that dirty look which to be honest is what I was trying to achieve during the development of the actual wash so I'm just going to pop all those in and then at a later date if needed if it's not dark enough we can actually pop round with some dark uh, with some black or something like that and refill them up don't worry about your bubbles in there they'll pop but there we go it goes in just like that and then obviously this is all wet so I've got to be a little bit careful how we're handling it but uh, I'll just find the, the little nook there it is here we go we're on there just like that and this gives us our entire engine area all done and what we can do and um, there's a little technique we'll do when everything's dry which was with a light wash to give those turkey feathers at the back um, that sort of white burnt look that they get but there we go that's that bit done okay and using the black pro modelers wash all we're going to do is going to wash out the actual entire area around the back now obviously be a bit careful because you're dealing with alclads and they do tend to be a little bit um, touchy shall we say on how they're handled but as long as it's dry the wash will be absolutely fine on there and if you get a cocktail stick pop it down the side pop it in the back it's easier to hold it and all we're going to do is we're just going to go along and give it some a bit of depth there again a bit of heat type of look to it and we're just going to give it a gentle wash all over and then once it's dried I bring you in you can see what we're doing um, and once it's dried we can just use your way we'll pop along with a, a little damp cloth and we'll get it all off but there we go that's the wash on there now and as I say when it comes off it should give us that nice difference between the chrome and obviously all the grooving and the bits and pieces will pick up so we'll leave that one side to all dry off okay so the actual wash has been drying now um, on these nice little parts here so if we start with the chrome one if we just pop this stick out now with the chrome one it's important that you moisture your cloth first but and also you want to keep it flat so wrap it around your finger moisten it rub it on your hand and it'll spread the moisten about a bit okay and then literally we're just going to run our finger right the way around now the thing is we don't want to rub too hard because otherwise you're going to end up taking the chrome off because the chrome is very very delicate stuff but it will be enough to give us a hopefully a nice little finish without ruining the effect of it too much so there we go if we bring you in like that i know it's quite hard to see under these um, shininess here but there we go you can see the blackness in the end and then it's nice and shiny and chromey on the outside. Now we don't want to handle that too much as I say because otherwise it does tend to come off. Same thing we're going to do on the other one. We just pull you out a little bit. Usual thing, we're just going to rub it all away. And this one we can be a little bit more brutal because it's had a, a thicker coat. But there we go, we're just going to rub it all off just working our way round so if you've got any stubborn bits give it a, a rub in a different direction it does tend to take care of that and then obviously if you've got a real stubborn bit avoid it for the moment because we don't want to over rub it and we can come back with a cotton bud and take care of it but there we go that's showing that one done just like that and as I say when you do get little bits which are playing that won't come off get a cotton bud on it direct and give it a rub and that does tend to shift them on. There we go, just like those all over. So there we go, if we just... Cotton bud around the outside, just to take it off around that rear ring. And we can find the two tabs. There it is, top and bottom. There we go, it goes on there just like that and gives that that nice exhaust. And as I was saying, what we'll do is we'll mask up this black 
make sure there's no wash on it as we've done the others and it's all wash free and then what we'll do is we'll get that dried off masked up and then it can be attached and we'll leave this part off um, separate with the other one and then that way it won't get sort of damaged or anything else like that okay so we're starting to bring it all really together now we've got the tailplanes on so what we can actually do is fit the um, tailpipes in the actual engine bay obviously as i've said i'm not going to put the actual um, rings on um, for the minute we're going to leave them off but we're going to actually put the back end of the engine in now it's what i was saying mast up simple bit of tamiya tape following that band uh, around there and then we're going to fit it on um, there's two locator tabs one top and bottom the smaller one goes to the top larger one to the bottom so we're only actually fit in one way it should be a very nice fit and just drop straight in there like that as soon as you're in and you're happy drop of tamiya to extra thin just all the way around and we just glue that in position it's a lovely fit in there just like that at the same time we can actually now fit the actual instrument panel in so what we're going to do we'll just put a drop on that side one on that side just around those little locator holes as it goes in and then the, the front instrument panel on the head area should just drop straight in we'll leave that for a little bit to dry and then what we're going to do is hand paint uh, the black area all around there and then we can get on and get it masked up and the canopies on which i'll show you next Okay, so for polishing canopies, two things to remember when you're working with all clear parts. First of all, when you're removing it from the actual sprue to cut away from the actual edge, so you always leave a tab hanging out. If you cut too close and sometimes it's at a funny angle, something like that, you can run the risk of fracturing and it cracking and going up into the actual canopy itself. And you obviously don't want that to happen. So if we just do a run through, basically what we're gonna do here, there's a center seam uh, what you can see is we bring it nice and close you might be able to see a center seam running right through the middle of these now they're quite hard to see i know but there is actually a line running right the way through the middle it's the way it's molded with the two halves coming together makes the seam in the middle two things to do before you start firstly is get a some modeling dough clay that type of thing um, this is like basically white tack that we use for other modeling duties make it up into a sausage and then basically we're just going to push it gently don't over push it into the back now the reason we do that is it will help spread the weight if you're pushing down pinching together something like that you might run the risk of cracking the canopy it has happened to me in the past i've done it lots of times secondly always work with old things when you're doing this you want an old worn down file like this one's pretty much had it but it's ideal if you're using something that's too strong you're going to scratch too deep into the actual plastic so seems running down the middle dough in there and then obviously using the rough side of the two sides first because we're just going to take the edge off we're just going to take down the roughness of that actual line and usually you can see when you've gone in because you'll polish right the way over the top or you'll sand straight the way over the top so there we go that's got rid of the actual the initial line itself just like that and then we come along with the very fine side same again and we're just going to go right over everywhere and really what we're doing with this one is we're taking out the scratches caused by the the harder side now you could start off with obviously a lesser grit so obviously it's not going to cut as far or deep into the plastic but it will take you a bit of time to get in there in some ways it's easier to do it this way and we get going just like this and then what you should do wet your finger rub it over and see if you can see a raised line still in there if you can't then you've done enough for that and that's the filing out the way that simple that quick next you can use i've got some um, polishing compound here this tamiya polishing compound although you can use um, tea cut is a good one or automotive polish anything like that and what we do um, another one is toothpaste i know a lot of people use that as well what we're going to do pop a a bit of the polish on the top just like that and then what we've got here is a very fine very old worn down um, sanding sponge this one has actually gone right the way through in some areas so all we're going to do is go on top 
and we're going to start doing little circular motions and polishing in and you should work if you're using any type of polish it'll be very very slippy to start with and then just keep moving it all around and keep going and all the time it's not making any noise and it's just sort of gliding around it's polishing down the plastic everything else like that and what we're going to hope for is in a minute or two if we keep going round and round and round it's going to start to squeak and when it's squeaking it means the surface we're on is actually very shiny um, and quite well polished so when we start to squeak we know we're almost there so we go around and just do down the areas all over and then what we're going to do is well and here you go you can hear a little squeaking and that means the actual polish is all worn off now and it's actually quite a smooth surface you hear that squeaking and there we go there we go, the camera's having a bit of a hard time keeping up with that. And what we do, we'll just then polish this off. And then what we'll do is just put another drop on the top. And then using probably a bit of kitchen towel, you could use any type of cloth. We're just going to give it a bit of a rub. Now the longer you do this, the better obviously the finish you're going to get. And so you keep polishing and polishing and polishing, you will polish it completely flat and you'll be absolutely a-okay. So there we go, we just the polish like that. And then you should be able to just peel it very carefully off from the backing, how well you can see that, but we've got absolutely polished to perfection. There's no seam line, there's no scratching, absolutely no nothing on there whatsoever. It's all ready to be fitted straight away to the actual aircraft itself. Okay, so masking up, lots of different ways of doing it. Some people use masking fluid. You can buy die-cut proper masks or whatever. Um, masking fluid, don't tend to like it. It tends to be a little bit too wavy, a bit hit miss and everything else. Tend to do it the old fashioned way. I use a bit of Tamiya masking tape, some six mil here, and I'll follow it along. Usually a straight edge or a nice chunky line to follow is the one I'll cut. If there's something a little bit more tricky or the longer line, um, I'll mask along there. So like for this one, it's a nice, long curve goes all the way down and wraps around to the front so we'll just follow that around stick down the tape and then if you hold it up to the light you can see the thicker plastic and it gives you a line to actually cut and follow so I'm going to do the same with that so we just cut it just like that and then you can remove same with the other side, if you start in the middle of the tape, it'll stop it from tearing, which is a nice little trick. So if you start in the middle of the actual tape itself, and then just follow the line nice and slowly, take your time. You should be able to just pull the rest of it off. It's got a bit of a tab there. There we go. And then if we do the other side as well, So we'll just start it on the where the other one ended. I'm just following it around. Back up. Same thing again, we're gonna start in the middle of that one. And then we'll come in the middle. Just like that. And then we've got a little bit left over just here. So what we can actually do is just wrap it round the top and just curve it around with the other one. Follow it around and then we go, we've just got it like that. And then all we do is use other strips of tape like I've done on this one just to fill in the area and that's it, job master.